My name is Thomas Nunez. I'm from Oak Cliff. I was formerly known by TJ Up. And I want to talk to y'all and tell y'all a story that I remember when I first started doing music and why it made me do the kind of music that I do today. And that is a uh, gospel hip hop. And I want to tell y'all a story about how I realized the day that God was real and that in life there's choices and in life there's decisions and it's really up to you to make that choice but this story helped me make my choice I was in a, a rap group a secular rap group called indelible click back in like 2006 2007 bunch of nobodies basically like we weren't nobody we were just in high school spitting bars over instrumental beats that you download off of YouTube or whatever and and there was this young gentleman by the name of Emmanuel. His name was Eman, and um, that was his rap name. And you know, he he came into my life, and it was crazy because he was only in my life for like three months. And in this three months, like he impacted not only myself but everybody in that group so so much that that whatever he said, we were about it. Whatever he wanted to do, we were about it regardless of what it was and before that time like God had already called me to the ministry but I was too busy and too focused on the stuff of the world that I didn't even bother to deal with the stuff that God wanted me to do and God wanted me to do Christian hip-hop but I was too focused on spitting game and trying to impress females and and you know do stuff for the world and it was like one day God started shaking me and God was telling me, what are you doing, TJ? What are you doing, TJ? You need to get with the program, TJ. And I remember thinking, like, man, like, God, like, like God's really tugging at me. Like, what do I do? And I remember praying one day in the studio, and I told God, like, if you want me, you got to bring my whole crew. Not just me, but my whole crew. And sure enough, within weeks i swear like everybody in my crew started going to church we were in and we we're going to a youth group at, at a church over here uh over here by creekside off of uh what lou 12 in kingland and um we we're going to that youth group and i swear like we we're being filled with the holy ghost and everything and like lives were being changed but it was a trip because just as much as god was tugging like the devil was tugging just as back just as hard and I remember like leaving the youth group and we would go to the gas station. We would go get brew, go buy our black and miles, go buy our, our our rillos, we would roll up and smoke weed and like like trip out and drink and go to the studio and just kick it like it was just another day and like if we didn't even experience God. And it was a trip because we did that for several weeks at a time. We were in church and as soon as we would leave church, we would go kick it at the studio and have fun and just as much as God was tugging in my life and in my friends lives like he was tugging at Emmanuel's life as well Eman and Eman wasn't having it and I remember one day and it, like it was crazy like he was in front of my house and he, he started looking up in the sky and saying F you God F you God like if you want me come get me like like like, I'm not just going to go down like that. Like, he wasn't trying to go without a fight. And one thing I learned in life, and it was from that point, was like, you don't do God like that. You don't call God out like that. Because God will show his face, and God will show up. And I want to say that week, uh, like, I had just started interning at a at a, a studio. and used to be right here off of Crocker Hill in Illinois. And it was called The Shop, CDs, and more. And uh, I was interning there, and I got to tell my friend Emmanuel about it. And he was ready to leave the, the rap stuff behind as far as, like, the group stuff. And he was like, you know what, TJ, I want to focus on me. I want to focus on you, and I want to focus on one of our other partners. And he was like, he was like, I want to take this rap stuff serious. And, you know, with your ear, like, I believe we could do it. So I was like, word. Like, so if we're going to do it. We got to do it right, so I need you to come into the studio where I work at, where I'm interning at, and, you know, let's do everything professionally. 
He's like, all right, bet. And we scheduled a day, and it was going to be on the, the following Monday. And uh, what was crazy about it, it was exactly one week from when he called out God in front of my house. And when that night, I remember it like yesterday, like I was chilling with him, and, and we were watching the Cowboys game, and then halftime came up, and I told him, I was like, say, hey, bro, like, like I got to go to school the next day. I was still in high school. I was a senior in high school, and I was like, I got to go to school, and he was like, nah, just chill, bro, and I was like, come on, bro, like, I got to go. He already been sipping a little bit, and he was like, you know what, you my boy, I got you. I'm going to take you, and he took me home, and, like, before he, he, he I got off the car, he, he showed me love, which E-Man wasn't the type of person to show that much love, and he dabbed me up, and he was like, like, TJ, like, you a real nigga, like, like, I just want to let you know, bro, I got love for you, and I was like, dang, like, like, he expressed something that I ain't never heard him express to nobody else and I was like already bet and we already had planned like that following day we were gonna go to the studio and uh, do everything and start on the new project and do everything the right way well the next day came I get out of school six o'clock hits and like I start blowing up his phone start texting him like bro bro where you at where you at what's going on and he wasn't responding and I was like man like what's up well, it turns out that he went back to that crib where we were watching the game at, and he got even more thrilled. And he left that crib, like, around one some, two some, and, like, he went drive, driving down Westmoreland and in front of Kimball High School where it starts curving, like, his his vehicle lost control, and he, and he went over the medium, and he flew out the window. And when he flew out the window, his vehicle flipped several times and on one of the flips it landed on him and it landed from his neck down and basically he was decapitated but the only thing that was left was his head and his head was looking up at the sky and like after that day like I was like whoa when I found out the news and the way I found out is I was at the crib waiting for him to hit me up and he never hit me up and around 7:30, I get a knock at the door and I'm like, man, what's that? And I opened up the door. I thought it was my mom's or something. And it wasn't. It was E-Man's dad, E-Man's brother, and I think his uncle or something. And I was like, what's up? And, like, they just looked at each other. And I was like, where's Emmanuel? Like, where's E-Man? They are like, last night at this time, like, he passed away. And I was like, passed away? What do you mean? I was with him last night. Well... At this time, like, he passed away in the car accident, and he's gone. And I was like, what? And they came to pick up his music that he had been recording at my crib. So I gave him a USB, and I gave it to him, and they left, and it, it didn't hit me. And, you know, three days later, you know, we, we had the burial and went to go do the viewing. And when I saw him in that casket, that's when it hit me. And I remember busting out in tears and crying like a baby because I knew that God was real. Because a week prior to that event happening, he called out God and told God, God, if you want me, come get me. And I know there's a lot of y'all cats out here that God is tugging on your heart and God is trying to reach out to y'all. And some of y'all are artists, some of y'all are producers, some of y'all are rappers, and God's trying to reach out to y'all and tell y'all, hey, what are y'all doing? I need you to do something for me. I called you to do something to me, for me. The Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. There's a possibility that you are chosen, but you're too focused and distracted on the world that you're not opening up your eyes and realizing that there's a greater opportunity for you. Great. The Bible says that... Uh, that wide is the road to hell, but narrow is the path to heaven. Like, like that's not something that everybody has that opportunity. And if you have that opportunity, and if you know that what I'm saying has to do or relate to you, like, like take that opportunity. Like, like what's holding you back? Like, like get up, be righteous, don't be wicked. The Bible says the difference between a righteous man and a wicked man is that a righteous man always gets back up and a wicked man stays down. Why have you been staying down so long? Like, stop. Like, are you tired of all the negativity and everything in your life? Like, do something about it. Like, he's waiting there. 
The Bible says to come as you are. You smell like smoke. You drugged up. You high. Whatever. On lean. You barred up. It don't matter. Like he's right there with open arms waiting for you. And if I could say anything, like that's what I would like to say. And that's to any artist or anybody in general that just needs to hear an encouraging word. Like, like God is real. And that's not a game that you play with. And that's someone you don't play with. And I hope that my friend's testimony, Emmanuel, will, you know, impact your life. And to leave off with everything, like, Emmanuel means, in Hebrew, God with us. And I even have it tatted on me. And, like, I feel like God sent him on purpose to show me that. And that was over 10 years ago. That was back in 2007. And I ain't been the same ever since. I ain't perfect, but I ain't been the same ever since. My name is Thomas Nunez, and that's a story about how I figured out that God was real.